his family, his children, his sons also started associating with the business because such a big business it is. Several growth of our business. Then one day he again went to this astrologer and the astrologer told him if you want to make even more money, I will tell you a uh, trick. So he said, yeah, tell me what should I do? He said, one of your employees, an assistant manager in one of his many restaurants or whatever, his daughter, if you marry, you will make even a lot of money. So this Rajagopal was already married twice, he had two wives. But astrologer has told this is the same astrologer who told me to start the restaurant and because of him I have become this today. And imagine he is telling you to make a lot more money if I have to marry this girl. So he started approaching that girl that I want to marry. Already he was quite old, grown up, sons are there, two wives are already there. He, this girl is a young girl in her twenties and he wanted to take her as his third wife. So really the girl was not interested. She said, I am not interested. She is burning. But he would not give up. He would continuously talk, uh, keep uh, sending proposals. He would not leave. Five years he was behind her. But this girl was not at all interested. So what did what she did? She fell in love with another man and married him. One man called Prince, Prince Shankar. So this man, what he did now, his dreams are all getting shattered. Then he started threatening that other girl. And he told her, you divorce him and come and marry me. You know, I'll give you so much value for this and that, all those things. She was not happy. So one fine day what he did, he sent a group of thugs who abducted this man, Prince, and they killed him in Moody. And they dumped his body in this way. So the police, they, they figured out, somebody came and uh, they informed them like this one, their body is left lying. And they went there, they found the dead body, they started inquiring locally, who is this person, anybody knows, nobody could figure out. So they did the postmortem and all. In the postmortem, it came out clearly that this man had been murdered by uh, suffocating his neck, by strangling his neck. And so they did all the postmortem, there was nobody to clean the body. So finally they buried him in some place in an identified location. So matter was going like this. But somehow, eventually, they figured out that this man is this guy called Prince and he is from Madras and how this man, uh, the Rajagopal is the one who has killed him. Matter came, came out. And there was a big court case, the matter went to the court, the case also went on for several years. Finally, the court convicted him. They said, you are a person who are And they said, you are going to jail. So, they gave him some seven years of imprisonment or something. And he went to appeal to the higher court. When he went to the high court, they shut down the judgment and they said, send him to like imprisonment. <laughs> and uh, he had to go into the jail. And he came to the court and said, I am in a very, my health is in very bad condition. Don't put me in jail and all those kind of things. Court did not agree. They said surrender within so and so day. Finally, he came in surrender. And within four days of his surrender to the police, he had a heart attack in time. So you see how this man, everything was doing well for him. He had made a lot of money, he had money, made a lot of good name also. All his employees would call him Anaji because he would take excellent care of them. He would give them medical uh, coverage, he would uh, take care of all his employees, daughters, weddings, he would give games, he would, he would take absolute good care of all his staff. So all his staff were very loyal to him. So you see, popularity was there, money was there, family was there, everything was there. But everything ruined because he decided to follow the advice of his astrologer. Now somebody may think, okay, this man, he is uneducated fellow, almost illiterate, with little education. These uneducated people are like this. No makes no sense. He cannot figure out this much. One may think, and he, he had to spoil doing this entire career, whatever he has built up over so many years of hard work, just based on the astrologer's advice. How foolish we may think. So a few years later, one year back, in 2022, another incident came to light. 
In India, there are two stock exchanges, one is the BSE, Bombay Stock Exchange, another is the NSE, National Stock Exchange. I think NSE is more recent. So, this NSE was, National Stock Exchange was being headed by a CEO by the name Chitra Ramakrishnan. She was a BCom and a chartered accountant, worked for many years in the banking industry, uh, part of the banking industry, the, the stock exchange industry, and uh, she had a lot of experience and uh, gradually over a period of time with hard work and, and her uh, intelligence and all that, she worked her way up the ranks of the organization. And when NSC was formed, she joined that, and eventually she became the CEO. Can imagine worked her way hard and uh, climbed the corporate ladder, reached the position of CEO of National Stock Exchange. What a small thing. Very big post. <coughs> Unfortunately, after some time, it was discovered that she was sending very sensitive information about the stock exchange, uh, by which somebody could manipulate the stock exchange and make a lot of money. She was sending by email to someone. So, the CBI started investigating because this is huge. There's a very big scandal. The CBI started investigating and so they popped out. Chitra Ramakrishna, what she was doing, she said 50 years ago she had met one yogi in the Himalayas. And that yogi would, uh, uh, she would keep taking advice from him and he would manifest himself whenever he wanted before her, he would give advice in the desert. So she asked him, you come whenever you want, but when I want, how do you contact me? Because you just appear and disappear. So he gave her one email ID. Redjusava at gmail.com. You put your mail address, whenever you want, I will reply. So whenever she, she was, she had some doubt or she wanted some advice, she would write to the email. And the email would give response. Do like this, giving instructions, do like this. Uh, even in the matters of appointing people, who to promote, who to appoint, who to dismiss. And uh, the stock exchange also, sensitive, uh, whatever uh, this one was there, information was there, she would pass on and ask for a decision. And she would keep getting from this email ID. And based on the advice which she got from this Sukhan Yogi, Or she did, or she appointed another person who had no experience in the stock industry and uh, she appointed him as a consultant and uh, he was being paid a huge amount of salary, some uh, one crore rupees per year or something like that, big salary. And uh, this was going on, somehow this whole incident came out and then when uh, CBI started to investigate, this is the spoken she Unbelievable. So the uh, CBI asked her, uh, how can you pass on all this information, sensitive information to this email ID? So she said, it is very common practice in the in any industry, somebody at the top level, whenever he wants some advice, he will informally ask some of his seniors or some industry experts and he will get informal advice and he will decide to act based on that. So likewise, I went to this yogi and I got uh, advice and he and I was following him. Last 20 years I have been following what is wrong with this. Finally, the CBI arrested him. So you see, unlike Rajagopa, she was not an uneducated person, highly educated, CA, chartered accountant, quite qualified, and worked her way up the corporate ladder. Not that uh, something you know she got out of the Urdu, she worked her way up. And every step she was recognized. <coughs> Sorry. Recognized for her intelligence, hard work, and all that, became the CEO of NSE. And this is what she was doing, being led by a yogi. And uh, unbelievable how people get conned by these kind of people. And they take decisions based on the advice of these people, finally end up in jail. So, this is a very unfortunate occurrence. This is not, these are not isolated incidents. It happens repeatedly with the even very educated, highly intelligent, highly successful people. It happens many times. It happens with uneducated people, very poor people also. There are many people, they, uh, they talk the dark of uh, uh, 
yogi or a, or a religious god man and they calm the people like this. Because these people know that the common mass of people, all of them have a tendency to highly respect and revere saintly people and they approach them for advice. And any advice which comes from a sadhu, these people will take it to heart. Oh, this sadhu has told me, so I should simply follow this. So this is this is a phenomenon which happens especially in India. Not only in India, even the abroad also in the countries like America also it happens. There also there are these shamans who charade as if they are spiritual people, shamans and you know they have other terminology from them. So this is a common occurrence. In the Sriman Bhagavan, in the eleventh canto, there is a description of King Nimi. Nimi was a king. Uh, you know, a ruler, a leader. And it so happened that once he went the Nava Yoga class, nine Yoga class, they were nine rishis or nine sages. And when he met them, he asked them many questions and they responded. So, like, you know, all these other people. So, this is not a new phenomenon that uh, all the eminent people, very rich people, very accomplished people approaching some saintly person for some advice. It is not something new. This uh, incident with Nimi happened thousands of years ago, which is described in the Bhagavad So, even at that time, this practice was prevalent. King Nimi is a king, he is a ruler, he is a leader. And the moment he saw Sadhu, he had many questions to put forth to the world. When you have a king of a nation or a country or a kingdom, all the citizens look up to the king. The king is the final authority. Everybody looks to him for answers. And the king is the ultimate authority. He is not answerable to anybody else. He is going and asking questions to some Krishnas. So, Radhagopal wanted to make more money. Chitra Krishna wanted advice how to run the SSC. So, what advice did uh, King Nibi ask? Nibi asked, how can I increase my, the size of my kingdom? How can I rule better? How can I become more powerful? How can I live longer as a king? What did he ask? So he asked the Navayogi He asked many questions. One of the questions which he asked was, Yataita Aishwari Maya Dustara Akrita Pavi Taran Yanja Deha Stula Divo Maharsha Idam Chaka. So, one of the questions which Nimi asked the sages was that in this material world, Akrata Atma people are not inclined to engage in any spiritual activities. People are engrossed in earning money, making a livelihood, securing their families, taking care of their families, and all these kind of things. Educating the children. These are what people are common, commonly very much uh, busy with. So he said, Akrata Pavihi, for these people, Yatha Yeta Aishwari Maya Dustara Taranti Anjava. So he asked that how can these people who are engaged completely in household affairs, economic development, sense gratification, and such activities, because of Stula Diha, because of identifying themselves with the body, because of the bodily concept of life. They are engrossed in these affairs. So, how can such people thoroughly cross over the Aishwari Maya, the uh, energy, the inferior energy or the material energy of the Supreme Lord? Aishwari means that which belongs to Ishvara. The Supreme Lord is called Aishwari. So, as Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita, that uh, that Mama uh, Maya Duratteya, he says this material energy is also his energy. So Aishwari Maya refers to the energy of the Supreme Lord Krishna. And because it is the energy of the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Control of Ishvara, nobody can surpass it in very easily. So he says, Dustara, this material energy which is Aishwari, which is uh, 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 an energy of the Supreme Lord. It is very difficult to cross over. And uh, this uh, energy of Krishna which is very difficult to cross over. Anjahataranti, how can these people who are 
uh, completely engrossed in material affairs. Anja are very easily, how can they cross over Karanti? So this was Marshi, no Marshi. Ida Mujjada, please explain to me how can the common mass of people who are engrossed in material affairs cross over the material energy of Krishna, which is very difficult to cross over. So this was the question. You see, he did not ask how to increase his money, how to increase his wealth, how to increase his uh, uh, all this <coughs> military power, economic development of the citizens. He did not ask about this. He said, how can my citizens cross over the ocean of birth and death? So to which the, the, the Rishi, the, uh, one of the Mughal Kamehavetras, Prabhupada was uh, replying to whom this question was put. He replied, Tasman Guru Prabhupada Vidya Sushreya Uttamam. So he said, Therefore, if one wants Vidya Sushreya Uttamam, if one is inquisitive to know Sushreya Uttamam, the greatest good, the greatest welfare, greatest benefit that he can achieve in the human form of life, then Tasman Guru Prabhupada he must approach and surrender to the Guru. Shate Vareja Krishna Adam Brahman Yupasama Shriyam What kind of Guru should he approach? Should he approach an astrologer like Raja Bhardin or some yogi who nobody can see or meet but is available on just one Gmail ID like Jantra Ramakrishna So what kind of Guru should he approach? So that also was explained by the Navayogitra What did he say? He said the Guru whom you approach he must be qualified in terms of Shabde Pareja Krishnatam. Shabde Krishnatam means Shabda means transcendental sound. The Vedic scriptures are called the sound vibration. Shabda refers to the Vedic scriptures. So Shabde Krishnatam, the Guru is extremely well versed with the Vedas. Not only is he well versed with the Vedas, Pareja Krishnatam. He is also very uh, knowledgeable about the Supreme Absolute Truth. Who he is God? What is his name? What is his address? Who are his parents? What does he like? What does he look like? So all these things, one who is aware of all these things, he is called Pare Nishnata. Pare is the Absolute Truth. Pare Nishnata means one who is well versed. So, a Guru is a person who must be well versed in the Vedas and he must be fully aware of who that Supreme Absolute Truth is. Not only that, Brahmani Upasama Shrayam. There you can find many scholars who can quote different passages from the Vedic scriptures, who, who, will, who will have written translations of the Vedic scriptures and they give their commentaries and all these kind of things. But simply being a scholar alone is not enough. That such a guru must be Brahmani Bhubasamashaya. He must be firmly fixed up in the absolute truth. Means his life, the way he leads his life, must clearly demonstrate his surrender to that supreme law. Brahmani Bhubasamashaya. So, the, the, the uh, advice given to King Dimi by the sages was if one wants to easily cross over the ocean of material birth and death, then one has to, the only way is that one has to surrender unto a qualified guru who is having the qualification of being very well versed in the Vedic scriptures and who knows for sure who the absolute truth is and he must be fixed up in serving that absolute truth. So such a person has to be accepted as a guru, not some astrologer, some yogi who you cannot see, who is available in some Gmail ID, or who calls himself a god man, who shows some miracles. The Bhagavad Shastras are not saying you, have, <coughs> sorry, you accept someone who is able to show some miracle, produce some ash, or uh, give you some advice by which your fortune will change. You are, a, you are a poor man, you follow the advice of this man and you become a rich man, therefore you accept him as a guru. No more, the Shastras are not saying any of such things. If your intention is to earn money, 
you are not able to see it, or your finance and others, it will help you how to increase your, increase your business and increase your revenue. If you want to know how to run an organization very well, there are management experts. So, you approach these people, why do you have to go to a sadhu for all these things? You don't need a guru for these things. There are so many subject matter experts available in this world, you can approach any of them, they will give you sage advice. You don't need a group to improve your health, your economic uh, health, uh, welfare, uh, uh, solve some incurable disease. If you have a disease, go and see some doctor. If your karma is good, you get a good doctor that will get cured. If your karma is not good, you will not get cured, that's all. You don't have to go to a group for this. Guru should be approached to understand Shreya Uttamam, what is my ultimate welfare. Srila Prabhupada says there are two words, one is Preya and one is Shreya. Preya means my immediate welfare. And Shreya means ultimate welfare, long term benefit. One is the short term benefit, one is the long term benefit. What do we mean by short term benefit Preya and long term benefit Shreya? Prabhupada gives an example. Just like a small child is there, the child wants to play. Child doesn't like to study. Child does not like to do the homework. But the parents, they see my child likes to play, but if he continues playing, he will not get educated. And if he is not educated, when he grows up, what will he do for a livelihood? So it is not in his long term benefit. Long term benefit is even though he does not like it, he has to sit and study, he has to do his homework, he has to go to school. So, the child wanting to play and enjoy is called a preya, immediate benefit. The parents wanting the child to go to school and study and give up play is called a shreya, long term benefit. So, in the case of human beings, what is shreya and what is preya? Shreya means long term benefit, preya means immediate benefit. What is immediate benefit? In a human life, immediate benefit is how to earn money. How to improve the comforts of my sense gratification? How to carry out my household duties very nicely? These are all called immediate benefit. Why? Because they are related to this body which we are currently occupying. Which is anyway one day going to get destroyed. Whatever you do, how much ever money, fame, reputation, all these things you earn in this life, they are not going to go with you when you die. So it is only immediate benefit. Whereas Shreya means doing something which will benefit you even at the next time when you die and you are forced to accept another body, what is it that will come with you? That is called Shreya. So Shreya, the ultimate benefit for a living entity is what a human should look for. Economic development, improving the comforts of life, securing the future of our children and family, these kind of things will go on, they are not very important. They are not Shreya. Actually, a human being should look for Shreya. A wonderful example of this searching for Shreya is given in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna, he asked Lord Krishna in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Karpanye dosho bhagas vathamara Prichami kwaam dharma sampoda chetava Yen Shreya asyan dishchitam dhuhi tanpe Shishya steham sadhima so what did Arjuna tell? He said, Karpatnya dosho pahakasvabhavala Dharma sampura cheta He said, because of my recent eating dust, I am completely bewildered. What is my dharma? What is my duty? Yet, Shreya Syam Nishchitam What is the ultimate Shreya for me? With certainty, please explain to me. Prove it on me. And if one wants to understand the Shreya, if one wants to understand what is the ultimate benefit of the human form of life, what was the advice given by the Rishi speaking to me? Asma Guru Prabhupada, you have to surrender to a Guru. Without surrendering to a Guru, you can never find out what is the Shreya, what is the ultimate benefit of the human form of life. So therefore, Arjuna Lord Krishna, Shishya Shreya Chadima Vam Prabhupada. 
He said, I am your disciple and I am surrendered to Prabhupada. I am surrendered to Shishya State. I am your disciple. You are my guru. Now please instruct me what is the of me? What is the ultimate benefit for me? Because Arjuna was seen right there in the battlefield. If he engages in the battle and defeats the Kauravas, he will get the kingdom. But the kingdom is Kriya, it is an immediate benefit. Arjuna wanted to know what is my ultimate benefit. If I fight this battle, is it going to give me ultimate benefit or only Kriya? If it is Kriya, I don't want that. If it is Shreya, then I, I will look at it. So this was Arjuna's goal. Tāpati doshopa dasvabhava dharma sammuna cheta and bewildered what's the yuna should I fight in this battle or not considering what is shreya for me what is the ultimate benefit for me Arjuna was not thinking of prayer Duryodhana was thinking of prayer he was his only thought was how will I get this kingdom in my hand how will I get the kingdom of Arjuna and enjoy the kingdom he was thinking of real prayer Whereas Arjuna was an exalted devotee, and so he was thinking, I am not interested in Shreya, I want to know what is Shreya. And how to understand what is Shreya? I need a guru. Who can be better guru than Krishna himself? So he said, I am surrendering to you, you tell me what is Shreya. So this is a principle, an inviolable principle of spiritual life. And the same thing is stated even in the uh, <coughs> Upanishads. In the Buddha Corporation, it is stated, Tal Vidyana Samsaguru Deva Vigarche Shotriya Samitpani Shotriya Brahmanishtam. Again, the same thing is being stated. Tal Vidyana Artham, if you are interested in Tal Vidyana, what is this Tal Vidyana? In the Upanishads, actually, there are two words which are used, Tal and Ida. Tal refers to spiritual subject matter. Tal refers to the absolute truth. And Ida refers to this temporary material world. So, whenever these two words appear in the Upanishads, it is implied by the usage of Tal means it is referring to absolute truth. And Ida, whenever the Upanishads take Ida, it refers to this temporary material world. So, if you are interested in Tal Vijnana, not in Idam Vijnana. You are not, if you are, you should, if you are interested in Idam Vijnana, you are interested in science and technology related to this material world. And you are interested in economic development. You are interested in how increasing your power of influence over the people. You want to rule over a country. You want to improve your health. You want to increase your wealth. If these are your considerations, then that is not Tat Vijnana. That don't. So don't go to a guru if you are interested in Idam Vijnana. If you are interested in Tat Vijnana, if you are interested to know the Supreme Absolute Truth, if you want to know who is Krishna, what is my relationship with him, how do I get out of this cycle of birth and death, then Guru Eva Abhiganche, one must approach a guru. If without approaching a guru, you cannot understand what is the absolute truth. And you should approach a guru only if you want to understand the absolute truth, not if you want some material benefit. If you want prayer, don't come to a guru. If you want shreya, come to a guru. Tad vijnana, tamsakuru deva, vidanche. And how should one approach? Samit panihi. Samit means, samit is a kind of wood which is used in conducting fire sacrifices. It is a, it is a pious mode, it is, it is a sacred mode which is used for conducting fire sacrifices. We cannot use any and every mode in conducting a fire sacrifice, in conducting a yajna. Specific mode, already mode, summit mode has to be used. So, if you are approaching the Guru for Tantinyana, for Shreya Uttamam, for understanding the ultimate benefit of life and to and uh, wanting to understand the signs of God, then you have to take in your hand body, summit, you should be ready to carry summit wood in your hand and go to the guru. What does this mean? Summit is the wood which is used for conducting fire factors. So when you when you go to a guru seeking knowledge about the Supreme God and you want to understand what is the ultimate benefit of the human form of mind, 
you should be ready to engage in sacrifice because the Guru will engage his disciples in conducting sacrifice. The prime duty of a disciple who has accepted a Guru of Tadhinjana of Shreya Uttama, he should be ready to act in, uh, be ready to conduct sacrifices. The prime duty of such a disciple is to engage in sacrifice. So, Samit Panihi, Shotriyam, and the Guru, what kind of Guru? Shotriyam. He, Shruti means the Vedas. Shotriyam means the Guru should be one who has received the Shrutis, received the Vedas in a Guru Sishya Parampara and a disciple succession. So, nobody can become a Guru simply on the strength of his intelligence and studying some scripture on his own. He created his own. A philosophy from his fertile brain and he became a guru. No, you cannot become a guru like that. You must have received the knowledge of the Shruti's, the Vedas, from the Guru Sishya Parampara. So, Kriya Brahma Nishtam, and not only that, he must be firmly fixed up, Nishta, he must be firmly fixed up in activities of spiritual life. So, a guru cannot be somebody who is wearing a bandit shirt and he has a job, he is working somewhere and he is also giving spiritual knowledge in the evening, he comes home and he conducts a discourse and he uh, conducts a uh, course on, uh, on uh, Vedanta Sutra and he is teaching you. Such people cannot be gurus. Guru means his only business is service to the Supreme Power. He has no other activity than devotional service to Krishna. Such a person is not. Brahma Nishtha. He is fixed up in spiritual activities meaning devotional service to Krishna. So, such a Guru who is engaged in exclusive devotional service to Krishna, when he accepts a disciple, he accepts the disciple on the condition that the disciple will every day engage in acts of sacrifice. And the yajna or the sacrifice which is prescribed for the Yuga is Sankirtana Yajna. He is the Yajna of Japa, Japa Yajna. Krishna also uses this word in the Gita. Yajna Naam Japa Yajna Musti. Out of all the different kinds of sacrifices, Japa Yajna, the sacrifice of Japa, chanting the holy names of Krishna, is the topmost Yajna. So, Srila Prabhupada is a Guru who is Shrotriya, who is coming in and Guru Sishya Parampara and his Brahma is firmly fixed up in devotional service to Krishna. He has no activity other than devotional service to Krishna. And whoever becomes his disciple, Prabhupada's first condition is every day you have the chance to steal Narada Savare Krishna Mahamantra. Yajna, life of Yajna is not there. So, Samit Pani, if you are interested, if you are ready, to accept Prabhupada's instruction to engage our life in completely uh, engaged in acts of sacrifice, which is epitomized by our chant Hare Krishna Mantra, then only we become eligible to become disciples of Prabhupada. So, this is an inviolable principle which is given in the Upanishads, which is given in the Bhagavatam, even in the Bhagavad Gita. Even in the Bhagavad Gita, also Lord Krishna, what does he say? Tad Vitti Pranipatena Parikrishnena Sevaya Upadeshtite Nanam Nanina Sattva Darshinaha. So Krishna is saying the same thing. Tad Vitti, we have to approach a person who is Tad Vitti. Again, Tad means the absolute truth. Tad Vitti means one who knows the absolute truth, one who knows that Krishna is the absolute truth. Such a person one must approach and accept as a guru. That the deep pranipatena one must surrender to such a guru. Not that I go to the guru and make a show and uh, challenge him and all those kind of things. No, one must be ready to surrender. Surrender means one must be ready to follow his instructions. That the deep pranipatena pariprasvena man we must be ready to put forth the questions. One must be inquisitive to understand Knowledge about Krishna, the science of Krishna from the Guru. Otherwise, what is the meaning of becoming a disciple? Therefore, Prabhupada instituted a system. Every day in his temples, one hour of, uh, uh, every day hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam has to happen. Over and above that, we have to read every day one hour of Prabhupada's books. 
that demonstrates our pranipadena pariprasthena our mood of pariprasna our mood that yes i want to know the science of krishna consciousness so if you are interested in knowing about the science of krishna consciousness you must focus on reading prabhupada's books nobody can say that i am reading i am i am a disciple of prabhupada and chanting uh, 16 hours every day that i am not interested in reading no reading is not something which uh, appeals to me i like uh, to keep and i like chanting that's it no one of the elements of surrender to the guru is pratipadena pariprasthena you have to uh, be inquisitive you should be enthusiastic to learn the subject matter the philosophy of krishna consciousness from the guru then only that uh, the purpose of accepting the guru gets fulfilled ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ be enthusiastic to learn the science of krishna consciousness from the guru pariprasthe na sevaya mamma be ready to render service to the spiritual master that means we must be eager to serve the mission of prabhu to spread the message of the bhagavad gita and bhagavad more and more more and more people so one has to be uh, eager one has to be enthusiastic for this these are the elements of accepting the guru so you can see how bhagavad gita bhagavata upanishads they are all stating the same thing so one has to understand that guru is required for what purpose one should not be one should not think that guru means somebody who can give me some uh, some uh, answers or he can cure my disease or he can solve my financial problem these are not the real uh, purpose of which one goes to the process of accepting guru guru is accepted for understanding the science of krishna consciousness and for stray or ultimate benefit which is to get out of the cycle of the birth and death and to go to goloka vrindavan and live one can live eternally so here in today's course also we have seen how <coughs> So we should not confuse that 
Krishna, Yasudeva, Maitreya, they are all on the same level, you know. Just because they are being called Bhagavan. The word Bhagavan is actually, the meaning of the word Bhagavan is given by Parashara. The word Bhagavan means opulence or Aishwakya. Aishwakya is a Samadhrit, say, media say, as you say, to see over. Jnana Vairagya is Jaiva, Shanna Bhagavati Indana. There are six opulences. All beauty, all knowledge, all strength, all pain, all renunciation, and all wealth. One who possesses all these six opulences in full is not Bhagavan, which is Krishna. Krishna is all powerful, all famous, all renounced, all knowledgeable, and all opulent. And he is all powerful. So, therefore, Krishna is the Bhagavan in the sense of being the three personality of Godhead. Now, the Vishnu Rana, it is stated, who else can be called Bhagavan other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Upad, Upadhi Pralayam Chaita Bhutana Agadhi Pradhi So, it is stated in the Vishnu Purana that Upadhi and Praya, creation and destruction Bhutana Agadhi Pradhi From whence all the divinities are coming God is the source of all the living entities. And Gudin, what is the final destination of all the living entities? And Vedi Vidya Avidyamcha, what constitutes knowledge and what constitutes ignorance? Vedi, one who knows all these things, one who knows what is knowledge, what is ignorance, what is uh, from where, uh, what is the source of all the living entities, what is the ultimate destination of all the living entities, how is this material, uh, material manifestation, how is it created and how is it destroyed. One who understands all these things, Vatsho Sa Bhagavan one who has this knowledge can also be called Bhagavan. So Maitreya knows how this material manifestation is created by the Supreme Lord Vishnu and how it is dissolved. He knows that all the living entities are coming, the source of all the living entities is Krishna. And the final destination within this material world, when the universe is dissolved, all the living entities will rest within the body of Vishnu. And the final destination for all the living entities is to attain Vaidurta Loka, to become devotees of Krishna in the spiritual world. And what constitutes Vidya, the knowledge about Krishna, Absolute Truth, and our being part and parcel of that Absolute Truth, and understanding our relationship with Him, is called Vidya. Everything else is Vidya. So somebody may be highly educated in the field of science and technology, he may be very accomplished, a doctor. So one may be all these things, but that is not called Vidya, it is called Vidya. Why is it called ignorance? Isn't this knowledge? You are making science and technology and you are making mobile phones and you are making tablets and you are making aeroplanes. Isn't this knowledge? It is not knowledge, it is ignorance. Why? Because these activities only serve to bind us more and more into this particular world and force the living entity to take repeated birth and death. Force the living entity to accept the material body. And that material body is a covering of ignorance. It is a covering of the ignorance which is uh, springing from the inferior material energy of Krishna. On the other hand, if one cultivates spiritual knowledge, if one chants the Hare Krishna mantra and reads Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam, one approaches a guru who is a qualified guru of the Guru Sishya Parapara and understands the Vijnana from him. What happens? One becomes liberated from this covering of ignorance which is this body and we can go to the spiritual world which is full of sat, chit and ananda. One will be in complete knowledge, no more ignorance. So that knowledge of science and technology and medicine and economy etc. which is only forcing you to accept material bodies which will keep you with ignorance, sthulatiya and this body, it is all of India, it is all ignorance and greed. All the glitter and glamour associated with material knowledge 
is actually pushing the Buddha into deeper and deeper ignorance, into thinking that I am this body. In the material knowledge only enforces your belief, the blind belief that I am this body. And therefore, they are all branches of Abhidhya. So, Maitre, you see, knows all this. And therefore, he is also a as Bhagavan. So, when the uh, Shastras are to Lord Shiva, in the, to Nyasadeva, to Maitre, you see, Narapuri, all referring to them as Bhagavan, we have to understand that they are not Bhagavan in the sense of being possessors of all the six opulences, but they are Bhagavan in terms of their knowledge about uh, how this material universe is created and destroyed and what constitutes ignorance and knowledge and also what, uh, who, who is the source of all the living entities, what is the ultimate destination of all the living entities. And one who possesses such a knowledge can be called a Bhagavan. Just like Prabhupada also. He also can be called a Bhagavan in that sense. But, when Krishna is being called in the Bhagavad Gita, he is being called Bhagavan because he possesses all the six appearances in full and he is the Supreme Personality of God. He is a different kind of Bhagavan. So this distinction has to be clearly understood and therefore Sutta Goswami, he is also a very knowledgeable Rishi, sage and he is well versed in the Vedic scriptures. So therefore he is not wrong in addressing Maitreya, so Maitreya, O Bhagavan, he is under Maitreya as Bhagavan, not because he is under illusion, thinking that Maitreya is a God. Oh, Bhagavan Maitreya is God, Maitreya no. He is called Maitreya as Bhagavan because of his transcendental knowledge. So, this is how we are going to do it. stop here. If there are any questions or comments, in the business. anybody has anything to ask? So, we will stop here. Tantra, Srimad Thakaram, Ijai, Jagadguru, Srila Prabhupada, Ijai. I go to the